behind the story of Apple, I think I've only had five or six really great ideas. We call them BFIs. Right. The B is big, the I is idea, and you can figure out what the F is. Mm -hmm. Featured. Featured. <laughs> and we only had five or six of those ideas. We latched on to Google and the IPO. Right. And if you remember, people said, this is crazy. It's a reverse dot, Dutch auction. It's such an expensive stock. If you had bought Google in 2003, you would have paid 0 0.5 times P on your 2025 earnings. And so I always remember mm -hmm. a great way to think about tech is can you buy stocks at one time earnings many, many years out? And how many years it takes is almost irrelevant. You latch onto these great companies. So we latched onto that. And then in 07 or 08, first Apple came out with the iPod just for the music. I'm going to contextualize this. People might remember what happened in 08. Right, it was not a time period when people were feeling, feeling relatively frisky with their money. Uh, and Philippe is And we just, we had, missed the, we had missed the music player, the iPod. Right. But when the iPhone came, I actually said, shit, this one's important. I'm gonna go to San Francisco. And one of the great misses in my life is I never met Steve Jobs. Right. Even though after MIT, thinking I would be a great computer, designed for great computer science, I had five job interviews at Apple and I got five rejections. Uh, so I never met Steve, but I went when he presented the phone and you could tell it was gonna be a big idea and it was obvious and big ideas are always obvious. And it was, if the phone has no keyboard, it's twice the size of the screen and you can have it in portrait mode and in landscape mode. And that was it, that was Apple. Everything else came. And Steve always said, I never asked if people should have a keyboard or not. He says, you don't ask people, you show them the right. best product versus after their opinion. Subsequent to Apple, mm -hmm. we've had a couple of big ideas. They don't, they don't know what they want until I show it to them. Correct. It's exactly right. right. Yeah, that's what he used to say. No market research. And so we've had a couple other big ideas. We've also had some missed ideas. When the cloud and SaaS came, I was late and our funds suffered right. uh, for that for a while. And so I think in, in the investing life, at the end of the day, there's a few big ideas, but they're like onions and you peel a thousand layers and uh, you come with, with a lot of new ideas. So um, a couple of years ago, you'll know exactly when, I remember the presentation you did when you made the call on a company called NVIDIA. Uh, and that was about, when it was about what, 20% of its value today? 22 uh it was, yeah, it was in 2022 it was right. a fraction of what it is today and i think it's up 5x 4 5x is then yeah maybe more i don't even want to Roughly. remember um but what was interesting is during covid we did well and then after covid there was a period with inflation and stuff and at one point we were like 70 or 80 percent in cash i felt i'd lost enough money and one thing that's really important what we do is if we do lose money at some point we always raise cash because then I always know I've got another day to fight. And I know in the private equity is different because once you own an asset, you own it. But in my case- The difference is you can also manage it. You can, you can, control, you can control the cash inside the business and it's spending. So you have a different tool exactly. to, for the same purpose. And we were just, and we also, we are mark to market on a daily basis and mark to market matters. Mm -hmm. There's pros and cons to it. So I was 80% cash and people say, my God, how did you figure out to get out of cash and back into the market? And it was NVIDIA. And uh, one of our analysts who's probably here today came up with the idea of NVIDIA and we're like, wow, maybe that's a BFI. And the basic concept behind NVIDIA is that- This was three years ago now. This, and to think it was only three years ago. Nobody knew about NVIDIA before. Right. And today it's the largest market cap in the world. I actually think, Glenn, Probably back when I pitched it, NVIDIA was 100 billion, 200 billion, 200 market cap, and today it's 3 trillion. Okay, 15. So 15 max. Right. That I was a little off. I was off by a factor of four. He's from next. Harvard and I'm from MIT. <laughs> we both agree. He tells a better story, but I've got the facts. Yeah. Um, he does numbers, I do words. Exactly. And so uh, it's really amazing. But behind it, if you think of a CPU, a CPU is like a little dumb calculator. And then with the network, 
uh, networking, we assembled a lot of dumb calculators together. A GPU is more like a brain cell and all those fiber connections. Right now we have GPUs that at times can be connected to tens of thousands yeah. of other GPUs. The fiber is like the synopsis. And what's so fascinating synapses. is synapses. Synapses. There you a, go. The synapses. Harvard guy. Synapses. Uh, I can translate. I also speak French, so I, I, I get both. Uh, and <laughs> so we're reinventing this computer fabric, and it's more mimicking like how human brains work. Brain, yeah. And so that was the, the Ironically, it was uh, the, the, that architecture was designed for graphic rendering. Graphics 40 years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, 